Hello, everybody. This is going to be a quick demo where uh, we try to answer the question, are C macros really as bad as Professor Grossman makes them out to be? And of course, they're not as bad as he makes them out to be. They are worse. And I hope to convince you of that in a short, this short video, or at least give you my opinion on it. OK, so uh, <laughs> I like this uh, comment. I took Dan's distaste for C, C++ macros personally. They're an easy target. I can understand people who like C and C++. Uh, feeling attacked in this class. Um, and this, this one is legitimately funny, I think. Uh, C, C plus macros, use so many parentheses, he says, as he braces racket. Okay, so that's legit. Uh, uh, I literally laughed out loud at that one. Okay, so um, could you explain the difference between how C plus, C plus, plus and racket scope macros? Uh, the videos say racket gets scope right, but I don't understand. This all seems fair. So let's use the following example. Um, uh, define square to be x times x. That seems reasonable. Um, and then if I square 1 plus 1, I want 4. So uh, I'm going to switch over to VS Code, uh, which, of course, supports C++. Uh, um, and uh, so I assume it comes out of uh, Visual Studio to start, which is a C++ uh, IDE. It's fantastic. OK, so we're going to write square. And it's going to be uh, take x, and I'm just going to define it to be x times x. And that seems reasonable. And I'm going to make some variable int want 4, like I wrote it out. And that is going to be the square of 1 plus 1. And we wouldn't be writing this whole thing if uh, <clears throat> this worked. So uh, it's, of course, not going to turn out to be 4. But let's see what it comes out to be. So uh, and let's tack on end all. And line at the end. So I'm just going to run this program. Um, and uh, if I hit Control F5, it should run it. Uh, and if I switch over to the run thing and look at the debug output, you can see like four is in fact three. So how did that happen? All right, so if we go back to the slides, what's happening is that it ex uh, you know, sort of like expands this out to one plus one times one plus one, which of course. This takes precedence, so you get 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 1, which is 3, and not 4. So that's our first thing. We can fix this by putting some parentheses around everything, right? So we go back here, and I parenthesize this like that, and I run it again. And I, when it all finishes compiling, I switch over. Now 4 is 4, so that's good. OK, so let's do another one where we say I'm going to make a variable called want 10 equals this, um, <clears throat> I'm going to say uh, 40 divided by the square of 1 plus 1. Right. And so like, I'm going to say 10, question mark. And I wouldn't be doing this right now if it was actually 10. But um, <clears throat> let's see what it produces. So I'm going to run this. And I'm going to look when it completes finishes its compilation and everything. I'm going to switch over to its drug output. And it is, in fact, not 10, right? So 40 divided by the square, like it produced 4 here. Like, what's going on here? So let's look over here. <clears throat> so what's happening here? Um, so like that one works. And this guy now says, all right, so like 40 divided by, excuse me, divided by 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 1. Right? So now, like, I've got like 40 divided by 2 times 2, which brings us back to 40. Um, so that's not what we want. So if I like put out all these guys in parentheses, right? so this is what he's talking about, where it's parentheses everywhere. Right? So if I parenthesize everything, right? um, again, I will run it. We'll compile it, run it, execute link, and all this. So now we're, all right, so now 10 is 10. OK? So like, you might say to yourself, it's not so bad. And people, when they do write macros, like parenthesize everything all the time. It's just how you do things um, when you're building things in macros. Um, and so we've gotten to this point. Well, let's talk about some of the other problems that come up with this thing. So I want you to imagine the following somewhat contrived program. I'm going to do the 3, 4, 5 triangle. And I'm going to set x equal to 3. And I'm going to say int want 9 as my variable name. And I want to get 9 back from the square of x plus plus. Now, I never encourage anyone to do this, but this would work perfectly fine as a function, where you would pass 3 in and then increment it. And I'm trying to do the 3, 4, 5 
triangle. So I'm going to do want 16 is now the square of x, okay? Because that should be 4, right? And if I output these guys right now, like I want this to be 9, right? <clears throat> And I want this to be 16. And then I'm just going to pass uh, this, you know, I'm going to print out the square root of um, want plus want 16, right? And that should be 5, right? So I'll put a little uh, 5 question mark here. And I'm sure I want everyone to imagine like what they think this is going to come out to be. You can pause the video if you want. Um, <clears throat> just figure out what exactly is going to happen in this program. So let's run it. Um, we'll build, and then I'll look at the console. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, oh, I didn't print the right thing. So let's put this here. First of all, we're already seeing like nine isn't even right, right? Probably at least some of you thought like 16 was going to be wrong because it was going to double plus plus, but a plus plus is in the middle, of course. Um, so <clears throat> what we get is we start off and we're like, all right, so what's nine? All right, so square root of three, right? Well, three times three is nine. Well, it actually got three and four, so we got 12 there. And this guy is already five, right? Instead of four at this moment, so I get this here. And so like, I do not get the value of it. So let's look a little bit. Uh, more in detail of how this one works. So here's that program I just wrote. <clears throat> this becomes 12 becomes x plus plus times x plus plus. So now it's three times four instead of three squared, which is what I wanted. And now this is 25 instead of 16. So this is around six is what it's going to use. Okay. So um, a little bit more on this. Let's talk about sort of a very simple uh, macro that you can build, which would be the max of a and b. Um, this is the sort of thing where uh, we get the same problem here, where we parenthesized everything to heck to try to keep anything from going wrong. Um, but like now, B will happen twice, sometimes, not all the time, right? Um, or actually, I'm not sure if it'll happen sometimes or not all the time. I assume it'll happen just some of the time. It'll just happen when it's true. Um, the other one that can happen is another one. So this is a side effect happening twice, which you don't expect when you're calling something. The other one is that, um, let's say that this took a long time to compute. Now all of a sudden I'm doing it twice, which wouldn't happen again on an eagerly evaluated function uh, call. So um, there's those things. What I'll also say is he talks about like doesn't respect names, like a C, C preprocessor that is you know in charge of uh, making macros work as well as like includes doesn't respect namespaces or anything really. Um, <clears throat> you, this is a very common pattern you have to do in, when you're ever uh, defining things in C++. You have to you know, go and if max is defined, like undefine it before you do something like include algorithm, just because there can be these side effects that occur uh, from one thing flowing into another. Um, so bonus problems is that it becomes harder to build tools when you have, uh, an impoverished macro system, like Professor Grossman described it. Like it just makes building the debugger and the compiler harder. Uh, debugging support still lags on macros. Uh, C++ gets an unbelievable amount of effort into its tools. They're fantastic, but it's just a much harder problem. Um, compiler can't count on much of anything. I know uh, people who work in industry who have um, entire teams devoted to just making the make file work well. Um, and certainly this is contributing to it. And C, the C++ module system was forever on hold. And one of the big reported reasons for that was because the macros are just so unwieldy, okay? Um, another question from uh, a student is, uh, is there something equivalent to macros in Java? The short answer is no. Uh, um, now the slughorn telling uh, Riddle how to do Horcruxes portion of this is, you can always build your own language um, where you pipe some program through the C process, processor first. So let's say you wanted to write uh, a Java language that also had macros, or excuse me, already had, yeah, already had C macros in it or wanted to do includes or whatever you wanted. You can always take your program and the first thing you do is pipe it through the C preprocessor. 
into the Java file that you would then send into the Java program. Um, so there you go, there you go. Uh, to reiterate, I do, I, uh, I programmed in C and C++ for a long time. Um, I don't miss the preprocessor. Uh, it's, it's definitely can be powerful, um, but I don't miss it. Um, I do like uh, a lot of the, you know, sort of uh, benefits you get when you get away from something as unwieldy as include and macros the way they are. I will give one caveat. It is nice to be able to define something like malloc and flee, uh, which are to allocate and release memory by building something like my debug malloc that has the file and the line number and like you're running in debug mode and you can get all sorts of information when you get a memory leak. Um, you can say exactly where all the references were and everything like that. And then you can do this when you're in debug mode and then when you release uh, compile, you can get rid of all this stuff very easily. And that's a nice feature of the preprocessor, uh, the way it works, the way macros can go. Um, but I wanted to give everybody uh, a quick inkling to exactly what Professor Grossman was talking about, the uh, impoverished C macro system relative to rackets. <laughs>